school board meeting back into order. Um, do I have a motion uh, coming out of closed session? Yes, Mr. Chair, I recommend that the closed meeting be concluded and the board certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. There's been a motion and a second that the closed meeting be concluded and the board certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification applies. And two, only such business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The motion passes. We're out of closed session. Are there any motions out of closed session? Mr. Chair, our motion that the school board upholds the superintendent's recommendation for readmission in student case number 010917-A. Second. There's been a motion and a second that the school board upholds the superintendent's recommendation for readmission in the student case number 010917-A. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. And the motion passes. Great. And we are going to pick up now with our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I have asked uh, Cameron Wood uh, with Troop 1187, he's a life scout, uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. That's Luke. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much and welcome to all of the scouts here. Are you all with Troop 1187? Great. Other scouts? Scouts from a different troop? All right. Wow. It's like a jamboree, right? <laughs> well, welcome each one of you. I'm sure you're out here not because it's an assignment that you have for scouting or any other reasons, but because it's the most exciting thing you could do on this Monday evening. That's 12 degrees. So welcome every one of you. Um, uh, just switching gears a little bit. Um, if you please join me tonight in a moment of silence uh, for Aaron Smith, um, who enjoyed driving a bus uh, for special education students for the past four years and who passed away December 23rd and for Mary Baker who was a school bus aide since 2003 and a Rising Tide recipient who passed away on December 30th. Our thoughts and prayers are with their families. Please join me in a moment of silence for them. Thank you very much. We will move on to our announcements. Um, and board members, if there are any changes, you can please note those when we read these. Uh, the personnel committee meeting will be held, no. will not be held this week, uh, will be postponed uh, for a future date. Canceled, and yeah, canceled for so January. The January That's personnel right. committee is canceled. Yep. The Parks and Rec Cooperative will meet Tuesday, January 17th at 6 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. The Mountain Vista Governor's School Governing Board will meet Thursday, January 19th at 8 a.m. in the Warren County School Board Office. The ACES meeting is Thursday, January 19th at 4.15 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. The School Board work session is to be determined and announced at a later date. Uh, we'll talk about that more. It uh, relates to our budget calendar. There will be a building committee meeting on Thursday, January 26 at 8.30 a.m. in the school administration conference room. The school health advisory committee will meet Wednesday, February 1st at 8 a.m. in the central complex building conference room. The school support council will meet Wednesday, February 1st at 7 p.m. in the school administration conference room. 
there will be a Fauquier Excellence in Education Foundation meeting Thursday, February 2nd at 4.30 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a Special Education Advisory Committee meeting Thursday, February 2nd at 5.30 p.m. in the Central Complex Building A Conference Room. There will be a Personnel Committee meeting on Thursday, February 9th at 8 a.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. The Finance Committee will meet February 13th at 5 p.m. in the Fauquier High School Library, and the next regular school board meeting will be Monday, February 13th at 7 p.m. right here in the Fauquier High School Falcon Room. Any changes? Fantastic. We will now move on to our citizens' time. Community involvement is an important component of the successful school division, and the school board welcomes public input. There's no back and forth dialogue during this citizens' time. However, ideas and concerns brought to this board this evening may be referred to the appropriate administrators for future information, research, and response when needed. Please be respectful of all speakers and limit your comments to three minutes. Um, I'll call your name, and if you would please come up to the podium, please speak into the microphone so that your voice can be recorded. Uh, I only have one person signed up to speak this evening. That's Liz Goodson. Uh, from the center district. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I do have to make a clarification. I was from the center district. I have recently moved to Falls Church for financial reasons. Okay. So, um, and I don't particularly like living out of county and teaching in county, but I didn't want to leave my job just because I had to move, so. Um, I'm here this evening. I would like to um, just let the board, advise the board of something coming up from the Fauquier Education Association. You probably know what I'm talking about. It's Read Across America. Um, Read Across America is celebrated every year on March 2nd. This year, March 2nd, is a Thursday. For the last few years, the Education Association has been working with the public libraries to do a joint activity. So we're going to be doing that again at all three libraries um, on Saturday, March 4th. And we, if any of the board members can attend and be, serve as a reader or just come, it would be great. Uh, we don't know at this point how many students will show up, but the, in the past, the um, attendance has been pretty pretty good. So um, I'll update you if should anything change, but our plan right now is March 4th. It usually starts at 10 in the morning. It goes for about an hour. And um, there's an art activity, craft activity, and then of course readers. Um, and there will be someone at each of the libraries to coordinate and so on. So hope you can join us. Okay. Thank you. Can you send an email out? Yeah, sure. I'll be glad to. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would, wishes to speak this evening? Okay, we will move on then. At this time, uh, board members may report on their liaison activities and committee meetings. It's been a month since we've met uh, together and I'm going to start down here with Mr. Mason. Oh, I did. I attend the um, third grade Christmas program at Emory & Pierce. Uh, that was a very enlightening uh, program. Great. Mr. Bland. Mr. Chair, it was a quiet month for me, so I have nothing to report this time. Wow. Miss <laughs> Sloan. Mm -hmm. It was a quiet month. We did not have our personnel meeting. We just had our finance meeting uh, about an hour ago. So I think uh, Prashant has some updates for us there and some information items and a motion for action as well tonight. So thank you for that. Um, if you didn't hear about the Kettle Run High School yearbook ranked among top in the nation, where is my, it was named uh, t 10, one of the 10 most outstanding high school yearbooks for 2016. If you haven't seen it, it is beautiful absolutely gorgeous and if you didn't buy one yet for 2017 you should purchase one because I bet this is going to win again uh, I believe we also had Liberty High School publications at one as well and it's just really exciting because imagine all of the high schools across the nation and every one of them has a yearbook and for Kettle Run and Liberty to be recognized we're very excited about that 
Um, I think many of you know our governor announced his education and workforce legislation, and uh, Mr. Chair, I may have some more detailed information as we get into this session. You know I'll be in Richmond many, many times in January and February, but you may have noticed one of his top five uh, education and workforce bills. The first one I think may have given some people um, some thought that this is this is terrific, this is exciting, and Suzanne, you must be really excited with your virtual background. <laughs> it's, the governor has announced that he would like to expand access to virtual education and require each school division to provide a free full-time virtual learning option to students in grades K through 12. And so, Dr. Jack, I know you have lots of money laying around for this, <laughs> and I think many people initially thought, well, that's great, but virtual. Um, requiring the school divisions to do that, I think, um, brings up quite a few uh, problems. First of all, equity. Um, you can imagine some of the school divisions that already have that um, going. It would be very easy for them, a school division like Fauquier, that would be quite expensive to require that. Uh, Lewis would need a raise, and others in his department would need to be hired. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting undertaking and an interesting bill. There's quite a bit behind it that I'd love to talk about if you're interested in offline, but um, I will certainly be speaking quite a bit against this, um, even though virtual and school choice is um, something that I'm in favor of. I don't believe that requiring every school division to do that at this time would be something that the teachers or um, school divisions would be supporting. Uh, I think, was that it? I thought I had one more thing, but it isn't it. I think that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Great. Let's go. Um, just want to recognize the great job that Liberty High School did with their winter concert. And it was a full house that evening, and a lot of alumni, a stage full of alumni, joined them at the end. So it was a great concert. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Dr. Jack? Uh, two uh, announcements just quickly. Uh, Mr. Strestha and myself will be attending the VAS, VASBO business meeting next, uh, next week in Richmond, which is, um, again, as far as things that the state offers, um, no, it's Richmond. Are you pointing like this? No, oh, it is this week, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're going this week, I go next week. Um, but it's, it's good, and we, I should be able to bring back some additional information about the state of the, particularly the revenue situation in the good. state. I, I don't know that much is gonna change, but uh, it's typically a good time to hear from some uh, in the know politicians and folks from the State Department, uh, so that, that should be helpful. And then uh, also we had our, the School Sport Council met just before, um, holiday break and um, actually no it was after holiday break it was uh, January 6th uh, very good meeting and uh, we were able to provide the school quality survey results to the to that group they were well received it was a good meeting and uh, look forward to uh, passing the new bylaws for the school sport council in the February meeting that's it great uh, I would echo to the school support council really is organized um, I mean they, they really are really very diligent in their work. Um, I was had the opportunity uh, through an invitation to uh, spend some time a day at PB Smith, um, observing some of their programs. I was very interested in hearing about some of the collaboration uh, in action, seeing that things that we saw through some of our school improvement reports. Um, and what I noticed was how much movement there was of students, classroom to classroom, always engaged. But what really pleased me was that they were never more than five feet from a book. So they were always near a book that they could access. They were always reading. And for me to see kids in K through two reading, whatever level they were at, they were constantly improving. And that was very exciting to see. I saw fantastic behavior within the classroom management. And I think that that is attributable to a lot of the activities activity they did. I was also very pleased to see the, um, the cafeteria um, and how the cafeteria worked. They, these kids had three cups, you know, the red, green, and blue. You want to keep, uh, red, green, and yellow, excuse me. Um, and you wanted to keep your green, right? Um, but it was because that means you're behaving well. But these children were allowed to engage with one another. Um, they were able to let off steam during that cafeteria time and it was a real model of excellence I thought so congratulations to Miss Smith and all of PB Smith for the work they're doing over there 
I will also say that one of the teachers is going through, went through a program that was funded through the Excellence in Education Foundation to learn how to um, manage their classroom a little bit better at a, and, and she said it was just eye-opening for her. So she's really bringing that back into the classroom. I was able to observe some of that fantastic stuff. So thank you for the invitation, Ms. Smith. If there's nothing else, we'll move on to our financial management report. Sean. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Jack, happy new year. This is your financial report as of November 30th. Uh, the finance committee was updated for, with the mid-year report uh, this evening. We will begin with the, oh, sorry, it was hiding. Now I can see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, um, the report is color-coded by our different fund types. The first uh, fund is our operating fund, the fund that we primarily talk about when we discuss our programs. Currently, the fund is in a positive balance. So as of November, if you recall from prior months, we have put a key indicator called the use of fund balance, and you will see that revenues are greater than expenditures. This is what we would expect every year, and the turnaround should happen right around this time. So we are in good shape there. Uh, revenues are around 39%, which is um, uh, consistent with prior years. The blue section is our school asset fund. This is the school, the fund that contains our cash to capital uh, programs and our uh, maintenance programs, technology. And the fund is in a positive balance. This fund is primarily driven by projects and um, funding is expended as projects are completed. The next group here is our yellow group, which is the school textbook fund. Again, we are in a positive balance. The note I will make about the textbook fund is we have a $1.2 million balance, and in the coming, in the weeks to come, uh, I, I anticipate you'll be hearing about a new textbook adoption. And our school nutrition fund uh, is currently, um, revenues are slightly lower than expenditures, but if you look at the previous year, we're actually closing the gap and uh, we're watching this fund closely. The finance committee has not asked us to market yellow yet, but uh, it's performing quite well. One of the primary reasons for that is actually, um, I think, not having snow days yet. So just keep your fingers crossed, and that should be great. Um, I did want to make one minor note uh, for the school board to note uh, in the above green section. I mentioned this at the finance committee meeting. The, f the federal government is updating their do um, you remember last year the, the state was updating their database, so the federal government is updating their system, and so there'll be a slight delay in federal revenues until about April. So don't be alarmed, it'll be fine, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just catch up. And uh, in a minute, um, I will update you in, on, the school on the, not school calendar, the budget calendar. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We will now hear from Ms. Downs about the Financial Resources Department report. Excuse me, Human Resources. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the school board, Dr. Jack. Um, the following is a brief summary of the occurrences in the Human Resources Department for the month of December. We currently have seven and a half positions vacant for certified vacancies still for this school year. And then we have um, 10 vacancies for classified. Um, 10 is not really a true number because we do have quite a few bus driver vacancies and substitutes that are filling those vacancies, so they both, um, one feeds the other. So on January 24th, we do have a job fair scheduled here at Fauquier High School's cafeteria from 3 to 5 p.m. We're looking for school nutrition, uh, transportation, as well as facilities positions. And then on March 18th, 2017, will be our annual education fair at Liberty High School. Any questions this evening? Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to our consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda, Mr. Chair, the minutes from the December 12th, 2016 school board meeting, number 13A, 
the monthly bills and payroll 13b number 13c personnel recommendations which include the following new newly hired one teacher one psychologist one fresh grant dietitian one instructional assistant and three custodians the resignation of one teacher one area building manager one instructional assistant and one custodian and the retirement of one associate superintendent her seat is missing She's usually right there. I'm sorry, I had to pause. One associate superintendent, one office associate, and one bus aide and one bus driver, which we had our uh, moment of silence for previously. I will second. There's been a motion and a second that the school board approve the consent agenda, which includes minutes from the December 12, 2016 school board meeting, the monthly bills and payroll, personnel recommendations, which include the following, new and newly hired, one teacher, one psychologist, one fresh grant dietitian, one instructional assistant, and three custodians, the re resignation of one teacher, one area building manager, one instructional assistant, and one custodian, the retirement of one associate superintendent and one office associate, and the expiration of one bus aide and one bus driver who we will dearly miss. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. And the motion passes. And we will move on to informational items. Um, first is revision of instructional policies. Dr. Berguin will present the revisions. Good evening, Mr. Gorg, members of the board, Dr. Jack. Um, you have before you request to approve the following six uh, changes, revisions to the uh, instructional policies. All of these are mandated by uh, law and have been um, reviewed by our school board attorney. Um, I can go over each of these or you can, you've probably already looked at them. Um, do you have any questions for me about them? They're pretty straightforward. Any changes, any questions? If we do have any, we can forward them to you, but. Okay, um, that'd be great, thank welcome you. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Consent. Yep, that's fine. We will move, place them on consent agenda unless we hear otherwise if there's additional questions or concerns. Thank you. Uh, second is revision of student policy 7-4.2, interscholastic athletics. Mr. Finn. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Jack. Here this evening to request that the school board review revisions to policy 7-4.2, uh, interscholastic athletics, and consider those revisions for approval on February 13th, 2017 at school board meeting. Uh, the reason for the revisions, again, is due to the changes at the General Assembly in the last session uh, for a House bill and a Senate bill, specifically Senate Bill 665. Uh, requires now that middle school athletes have a current um, physician's approval uh, through an exam by a licensed physician, uh, nurse practitioner, or physician's assistants within the last 12 months and be found to be physically fit for athletic competition. Interestingly, we've done this all along. That was my question. Yeah, we do. But now it'll be in policy and, and required. Um, and then additionally, uh, House Bill 954, a return to learn protocol uh, for students who have suffered concussions or some sort of head injury. And as, as you probably know, we have already the return to play protocol in our policy and regulation. Uh, this would add the return to learn uh, requirement. And what re return to learn means, if I can read, because the print is very small and I'm getting old, <laughs> um, uh, it means uh, instructional modification that support a controlled progressive increase uh, to cognitive activities while the student recovers from a brain injury, typically a concussion. So um, what we will be doing subsequent to the policy being approved, we will be um, adapting our regulation uh, 7-4.2a to incorporate a, a protocol for return to learn and you know the the whole point of it is too is to increase awareness of teachers and our health care providers in the community to make sure they understand that when um, 
there is a brain injury, there's a, an important period of time where there has to be cognitive rest. And barring that, um, you could do further damage. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Can I just ask one question? How do we get this information out to the physicians? We, we've already had, over the last couple of years, good conversations with them, and so we will mount an outreach effort to the physicians' offices. We have certain uh, physicians' groups that we um, typically work with, and then they're pretty good about spreading the word. But uh, what I'd like to do is develop some sort of an easy uh, physician-friendly checklist that they can uh, fill out so that it's informative along the lines of the requirement but it helps our teachers understand what students can and cannot do at a given point in time. Okay. And the, the VHSL provided form, doesn't, that doesn't suce then? The, uh, we, it might be a good idea just to look at that I don't first. Think it's been updated is yeah. the problem, right? Yeah. I don't think it's 2016. Yeah, there's, there's three areas that, that they focus on in this bill. Uh, difficulty with concentration, organization, long and short-term memory. Uh, they also look at sensitivity to bright lights and sounds. And then uh, third area is short-term problems with speech, reasoning, planning, or problem solving. So we'll probably develop that along those lines because that's typically what the issues are during recovery. Probably going to have to adjust the, newly, the, the newest regulation regarding non-public school students, middle school students' participation. Is that, that the phrasing, the word, wording there doesn't have anything doesn't have much to do with what's in that. Return to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, That's that good. and the requirement related to um, a physician. I think we ask, we ask for a letter from a physician or just right. certification. Right. The good news about that is that all exists in your regulation. So I can just change yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll work together and get that done. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I have this maybe for another person another time, but uh, teacher training on this is that been prepared because they'll be asking yeah, questions I, I guess that's um, a good good thing I'll review that with Miss Downs and see the best way to approach that because it is a matter of awareness and you know you, the assumption of a teacher if you're in my classroom you're here to learn but you know a graduated return may say that they can't do certain things when they're in your class so, mm -hmm. so okay thank, thank you. you thank you <laughs> hmm? I think we can put this, if you guys have any questions about, if you all have any questions about this, we can change it, but otherwise I think this is fairly set. Uh, we're going to move now to the Middle School Modernization Committee recommendation. Ms. Bourne and Ms. Duncan, who was part of the committee and selected to help present this report to us, uh, will have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Jack. Um, I'm pleased to be here tonight to talk to you about the middle school modernization effort that's been underway now um, that we initially discussed in November um, last year, uh, um, November 2015. So we've been talking about this for some time now. Um, and with me is Joanne Duncan, and Joanne is a member of the committee. I'm going to just briefly go through the, the committee process, and Joanne's going to give you some background and talk about the recommendation. Just hit the little button in the middle. Well, I did, but right side's not working. You have to move it for me. <clears throat> not working. Um, so that's what I just said. Next. Okay. Um, the advisory committee, um, as as I mentioned um, in. At your retreat in November 2015, we talked about appointing a middle school advisory committee. Um, ultimately, we um, selected that committee in May 2016. There were 45 members. Um, we took people who volunteered, and then we selected other members that were representing different community groups so that we had a broad representation across the com community. The committee was charged with developing and evaluating options for renovating or replacing Taylor and Warrington Middle Schools. We, um, the committee was also charged with engaging the community. This was a key piece that we dis discussed at your retreat, to engage the community in considering what the middle school options were and what the um, community um, 
felt like they wanted to see. And then the committee um, developed a recommendation for your consideration to use in making a decision for middle school modernization. And that's the recommendation we're bringing to you tonight. Um, as I said, there were 45 um, members on the committee. They're listed above. Um, do, if, do we have any committee members here tonight um, other than Joanne? Uh, Randy was a committee Maybe. member. Mm -hmm. Anybody else here? Sarah was a committee member. Um, we had we had parents, we had students on the committee, um, we had someone from the clergy, someone from the community college, um, business community was represented, town you, we had Town of Warrington, the school board, the board of supervisors, so um, par um, teachers, administrators, so we tried to have a very broad representation. Um, former teachers, um, people who had been in Warrington and Taylor Middle Schools, people from Auburn Middle School, so that the other middle schools were represented as well. So we had very broad representation. Um, I'd just like to say that it was a wonderful committee. The members were very committed to this process. They did a wonderful job. Um, they were engaged during the meetings, and some of our meetings were very lengthy. Um, time-consuming um, and hard efforts. It was hard work. And so they did a great job and on, I'd like to say on my part that I'm just grateful for the time and effort that they spent on, the, on this project. And there were, when we went into this process, there were no preconceived um, options. Um, the committee developed options and the option that I think we ultimately came up with was not one that we conceived at, in the beginning of the um, process. Um, so I think that um, it was a very worthwhile effort and I think that um, the decision to use an advisory committee was an excellent one. Um, I just wanted to give you briefly so that you can see kind of the effort that went into this. Um, the committee was appointed in May and during the summer uh, months and into September. The committee toured um, Warrington Middle School so they could see the condition of it, Taylor Middle School, Auburn, um, because Auburn is our newest middle school. And then we also went to Frederick County, Virginia, um, and they um, toured the new middle school in Frederick County that just opened this September so they could see what's being done with brand new middle schools um, right now. Um, there were four committee meetings, the, um, the ones that are in kind of the beigey pinky color. Those were the committee meetings. Um, there were two community dialogues, and um, the meeting in the middle was an options development subcommittee meeting. Joanne's going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so they spent a lot of time um, on this process. So I'm going to turn it over to Joanne and let her um, tell you about the um, process and submit the report and recommendation to you. Okay. Thank you very much for having me and allowing me to talk about this. Um, and I too enjoyed the process and thought that it was very worthwhile and hope that um, the recommendation when you all carry it further will get resounding approval. <laughs> um, the community engagement um, process was kind of a culmination of the committee meeting. So we would have a committee meeting and then we would engage the community and have a couple more meetings and engage the community. So I'm gonna talk about the community engagements um, first and then kind of go through the recommendation. So the two community dialogues, we had the first meeting we had, we had 66 people attend the meeting, actually physically attend the meeting and 652 people responded to the survey online, which is a pretty significant number for our community, I think. Um, and in the second community meeting, there was 52 members who attended and 293 people responded to the survey in the second community um, meeting. Um, in the first community dialogue, we were trying to figure out what the community thought about renovating or replacing both of the middle schools. And so one of the major questions that we asked were, would you like to renovate? Would you renovate or replace Taylor? There was lots of information given to the community about what that meant so they could make an educated decision. And 64% um, said that they would replace Taylor Middle School. 
Um, the second question that was asked, which is the next slide, was um, the same question regarding Warrington Middle School. And in this case, it was kind of 50, almost 50-50. A little bit more actually uh, were in favor of renovating Warrington Middle School. So there wasn't as much support for replacing Warrington as there was um, for Taylor. But still, um, you know, everybody kind of, they had the information that was given to them to make that decision. Um, and after that meeting, there were, um, there was another committee meeting where we kind of went over what the community said, um, those 600 people that responded and everybody else. And then um, we discussed, well, there was an options committee picked and basically that was very random. It was everybody who was available on the day that that meeting was gonna happen put their name on a card. We put it in a bucket and they picked three names out of it and then some backups in case um, people couldn't make it. And I was actually picked to be at that meeting. That meeting was an all day brainstorming meeting. Um, there were um, a couple of school board members there. There were three co um, committee members. The um, Janice and Dr. Jack were there and we had a couple of other um, like the finance people and all of the consultants were there as well. And so we had lots of expert information on hand to ask questions about all kinds of different things. So we talked about all the different options that we could think of, um, renovating, replacing, um, combining, uh, you know, all kinds of different stuff. We talked about the pros and cons of each of those options. We asked about the boundaries and where the people were, how many people were in this area or that area. Um, we talked about costs, timelines. Um, I, don't, I mean, we talked about a lot of different stuff. It was an all-day thing. Um, and then we, the, we brought the options back to the committee, and the committee kind of went through and decided which, op well, the, I guess the options committee came up with the three best options. And then we went to the community meeting with those options. And so these were those options. Um, the first one was to build a new Taylor and a new Warrington on the existing sites. Um, that would cost $98 million and it would take um, several years to complete because it would have to be done in two separate sections basically. And in, in that um, particular community, when we went to the community with that, the respondents, 42% of them supported that idea. 58% of the respondents did not support doing that. Um, probably because of the price tag. <laughs> um, so then we, um, the other two options, there was option 2A and 2B. Um, option 2A was, uh, to consolidate the Taylor Middle, Taylor and Warrington Middle School on the Taylor Middle School site, it would be an a, thousand, a thousand student capacity and it would cost $55 million. And in that one, the community, 64% of the community strongly supported that option. Um, Based, the cost is based on how long it would take. So if we were to start the project and finish the project by 2021. So that was part of it too. I think that was the lowest cost. Option 2B was to do a 900 student school, again, on the Taylor Middle School um, site, and then to, to do an addition at Auburn Middle School. And that would allow a few more students and a little bit mo more mobility and would cost $61 million. That could be done in the same time frame because Auburn could be done at the same time that the consolidated school was being built. And 54% of the respondents supported that idea. So um, then there was the question of where to do it. And I guess I kind of said that it was Taylor Middle School, but we there were two different questions on the survey. One, rate your support for Taylor Middle School, using the Taylor Middle School site, and 81% of people thought that the Taylor Middle School site was a good site to put the consolidated school. And then Warrington Middle School, the second question, 70 respondents said they would prefer that, which 26% said that they would prefer to have the school built on the Warrington Middle School site. So 
we get to the recommendation now. So the recommendation was um, first not to choose between 2A and 2B because we felt like that was something that the school board would need to decide based on all the information that, that they had at the time to use. Um, so it would either be 1,000 student capacity at 55 million or a 900 student capacity school with the 300 um, student addition at Auburn for 61.4 million. Um, there were pros and cons, and those are listed on, on the next slide, but um, some of the major things to consider building on the Taylor Middle School site was basically that the Taylor Middle School site was larger. Um, the community and the committee supported honoring the history of both schools in some way at the new middle school, and then also you know, the boundary adjustments that would need to happen. Um, if they were just to consolidate, you could maybe wait a little while to do that. Um, so the site plan, the good thing about either 2A or B is that Taylor Middle School could remain open and students can continue to go to school in Taylor until the new school was built. So in the orange part up at the top, that would be kind of the phase one of the project. Um, and the building would be, the new building would be situated somewhere over in that area. Um, and then once that was built, all the students could move in. The old Taylor Middle School would be demolished and the fields and other amenities of the school would then be built after that. So it would kind of allow, um, so we don't have to do trailers and moving students and figuring out where everybody's gonna go and all of that stuff. Um, and I think that was it. Then the benefits and challenges are listed there. Um, costs and educational opportunities and the potential for um, transportation efficiencies are all the benefits. Some of the challenge was just to be training the staff and um, you know what would a larger school mean to the community. Um, and the town, the area that it would be in would still be town, but it wouldn't be as close as Warrington was. So that's it, I think. Did I forget anything? What Janice is gonna do next steps. I can tell you about the next steps, but um, <laughs> do you have any questions? Um, yeah. Before we talk about the next steps. Any questions? No. Okay. okay. Um, so um, the report's now submitted to you. Um, it is posted online. There's a link online to the full report. It's um, about 260 pages long. Um, it has appendices that have minutes and reports from every meeting that was held. So if anybody is interested in any of the details of the meetings, they're in that report. Um, you have a copy of the summary report. That's also posted online. It's about a six-page executive summary that talks about the recommendation. So um, you have that information. Um, we are working now with the county to try to schedule the consultants to come back where they will talk to the school board, and then they will talk to the school board and county liaison committees and do that on the same day and so we're looking um, at doing that on right now we're looking at january 19th and january 26th that we don't know which day is going to work for the county um, we're waiting to hear from them um, then um, we haven't put any hard dates on these because we don't know until we get the liaison committee in uh, or, i'm sorry the consultants in to talk to both committees and the school board um, in February, um, some, you'll, we'll have a process for you to decide on whether you're going to accept the committee's recommendation or if you need to tweak it in some way. And of course, there's parts of it that you would need to tweak anyway because you'll have to decide at a high level <coughs> what the capacity would be of the school initially, at least to um, pursue funding, um, even if that changed over time as, um, as the, what happens in the school's enrollment changes. Um, between now and the time the project would start, you could make some adjustments. Um, and then in March, um, meet with the school board and the board of supervisors could meet, would meet to talk about the CIP, which would include the middle school project that you determine um, is the most important. And um, in April, the county adopts the budget in the CIP. And of course, our anything we do has to be adopted in the county's <clears throat> CIP um, to receive funding. So that's next steps. So any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
A lot of work went into this 271 pages. A lot of work. And thank you to all the committee. Ms. Duncan, we thank you on behalf of the board for the entire committee. Um, we ask, you know, if you do see them, please extend that thank you to each one of them. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, we do have one adjustment to the um, agenda, which is to uh, have an information item about the budget calendar. Good evening again. So to kind of tie up with what was just presented, uh, the school board, as you recall, adopted the budget calendar on November 14th, 2016 with the note that there could be some updates because it's a unique year with uh, the CIP project. And so um, this is an effort for administration to make sure that we publicly make everybody aware of any minor changes and updates. Uh, we are currently in January. And so uh, as uh, Ms. Bourne mentioned, the first step there in the middle block uh, discussing the um, school board reviewing um, the advisory committee recommendations is, is occurring at this time, or has occurred, sorry, and we're currently trying to schedule a meeting on the um, 19th or the 26th, so that's why it says that. Um, the, the county administrator's uh, meeting was originally scheduled for the 19th, but it's very likely that that meeting will move uh, depending on the flow of this uh, process, and the county has been very, um, they've been working with us on that. The superintendent's uh, uh, pres uh, base, um, sorry, the superintendent's proposed budget was originally scheduled for January 23rd. However, that's also going to possibly change to the 19th or the 26th, and it's kind of tied to this date. Okay, so we'll be prepared uh, to present um, whenever that day is set. And uh, just so you're aware, board uh, and citizens, we'll be updating this. This calendar is available on the on the website. There's a link right on the first page. And so as soon as we are aware, we will update the website. And um, we will also let you all know. Everything else is uh, um, pretty much the same. I do need to update you on one thing that was discussed in finance committee earlier. And that is originally we had planned for the school board's work session to occur the first week of February. But as it turns out, that's more likely going to be the last week of this month due to some some scheduling issues okay so I will be updating that that just happened so okay. uh, I will update that uh, so you're aware and as was discussed uh, in November most likely the the two by two meetings and the joint um, school board uh, and the uh, county board meeting may not be needed however uh, it is very possible as Ms. Bourne uh, noted in her presentation the March meeting may turn into a, a CIP yeah. meeting Okay, yeah. so we're leaving that date there because um, the process is fluid. Do you have any questions or concerns for me? Not at this time, but I'm sure there will be some issues. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and by rule, do we have to adopt these changes? We do not have to adopt these changes, so they are just informational. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anything else to come before the board this evening? All right, movement to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you all very much for coming this evening. Thank you.